Hello and welcome to the world of free learning. This is Edupedia World and you are watching operations management videos. This session will be starting with the topic of demand forecasting. Forecasts are becoming the lifeline of business in a world where the tidal waves of change are sweeping even the most established of structures. Survival in this age requires the tact, talent and technique of predicting the future. And demand forecasting is all about predicting the future. Today we'll just look at the introduction to demand forecasting and the topics which we'll be covering is first of all we will look at the meaning and the formal definition of demand forecasting then we will move on to look at the importance of this topic then the criteria of good forecasting method and finally we'll conclude with the limitations of demand forecasting all right so now let's move on to understand what basically demand forecasting is we know forecast is becoming the sign of survival and the language of business. All requirements of the business sector needs the technique of accurate and practical reading into the future. Forecasts are therefore very essential requirement for the survival of business. Management requires forecasting information when making a wide range of decisions. So now let's look at the formal definition of forecasting. Demand forecasting is the scientific and analytical estimation of demand for the product or service for a particular period of time. Now what do we understand? Well, demand forecasting, here it says, is the estimation of the unknown future demand using some analytical technique which uses the past data and some statistics or merely the judicious, well thought and discussed judgment of the decision maker for the purpose of production and operations planning. Another definition says that it is an art or science of predicting or estimating the future demand for a product undertaken for the purpose of long-term decision and planning. So a forecast is a prediction or estimation of future situation. It is an objective assessment of future course of action. Although we have got several definitions, but what we understand from this is that it is the process of determining how much of what products are needed, when, where and how long. Although future demand is highly random and affected by many factors, demand characteristics such as trends, cycles and seasonal variations can be predicted using the numerical techniques. Now, too much emphasis should not be placed on mathematical or statistical techniques of forecasting. Those statistical techniques are essential in clarifying relationship and providing techniques of analysis. They are not the substitutes for judgment. Also, it should be left entirely to the judgment of the so-called experts. So, what is needed is some common sense between both pure guessing and too much of mathematics. So now let's move on and look at the importance of demand forecasting. It is becoming increasingly important and necessary for business to predict their future prospects in terms of sales, costs and profits. The value of future sales is crucial as it affects costs and profits. So the prediction of future sales is the logical starting point of all business planning. Demand forecasting is very popular in industrially advanced countries and demand forecasting is bound to become more important with the growing industrialization of the country. So what we understand is that the first and foremost importance which we can emphasize on is that it is necessary for sound planning. It lays the foundation for operation planning, scheduling, production planning, inventory management and other production and operation functions. Long-term plan forms the framework for corporate investment planning, capital management, expansion, capacity planning, research and executive development. Forecasting plays a pivotal role in the operations of modern management. It is an important and necessary aid 
to planning and planning is the backbone of effective operations. Many organizations have failed just because of lack of forecasting or faulty forecasting on which the planning was based. For example, Curtis Wright, one of the major aeroplane manufacturers, the equal of Douglas and Boeing combined in 1945, decided to put its money into an improved piston engine instead of jets. The management of Curtis Wright did not accurately forecast the markets for jets and hence failed. The more accurately the future conditions can be predicted, the better and more sound are the plans and higher the probability for success of these plans. On the national level, sales forecast of particular products may provide guidelines for demand forecasting for related industries. For example, a demand forecast for cotton textile may provide an idea of probable demand for textile machinery, ready-made garments, dye stuffs, and so on. Now the government on the basis of sales forecast may decide whether imports are necessary to meet the deficit in the home demand or may provide export incentives for any surplus. Thus demand forecasts are useful to the firm, industry as also to the government. Moving on to the next important point a firm can maximize its profits only when it produces on the basis of demand of its products. So the next important point is about the maximization of profits. Now we know inaccurate demand may lead to shortage in production, excessive inventory, understaffing, delay in deliveries, etc. and various other mismanagements and mishandlings leading to decay in business. There will be no problem of over and under production if the figure of sales forecast is accurate. As it will reduce or have control over costs, the profit will certainly go up. The importance of sales forecasting is much more in large sale or seasonal industries. In the same way, business and economic conditions change over time, thus prompting to investigate and know in advance the nature of demand beforehand. The sales forecast is particularly important as it is the foundation upon which all company plans are built in terms of markets and revenue. Management would have been a simple matter if business was not in a continual state of change, the pace of which has quickened in the recent years. Apart from these major importance, there are some more like it gives confidence to the managers for making important decisions. It keeps managers active and alert to face the challenges of future events and the changes in the environment. So we see that it has got a lots of importance especially in the ever changing modern business scenario. So this importance has made it an important function and practically no industry can work without forecasting their needs, their demand, their sales, which is going to come. Alright, so now let's move on and very quickly look at the various criteria of a good forecasting method. There are a good many ways to make a guess about future sales. They show contrast in cost, flexibility and adequate skills and sophistication. We will see all of these various methods. In our upcoming sessions, we will see the various types of forecasting, various methods used, the qualitative and the quantitative methods. But given the contrast in all of these methods, there is a problem of choosing the best method for particular demand situation. However, there are certain economic criteria of broader applicability. We will look at them very quickly. Some of them are accuracy, plausibility, durability, flexibility, availability, economy, simplicity and consistency. So let's look at them one by one. If we look at the first point that is accuracy, the forecast obtained must be accurate. Now how is an accurate forecast possible? 
we know it is practically not possible to get 100% accurate demand. To obtain an accurate forecast, it is essential to check the accuracy of the past forecast against present performance and of the present forecast against future performance. Accuracy cannot be tested by precise measurement but by judgment. Coming to plausibility, the executive should have good understanding of the technique chosen and they should have confidence in the techniques used. Understanding is also needed for proper interpretation of results. Plausibility requirements can often improve the accuracy of results. If we talk of the durability, unfortunately a demand function fitted to the past experience may back cost very greatly and still fall apart in a short time as a forecaster. The durability of the forecasting power of a demand function depends partly on the reasonableness and simplicity of the functions fitted, but primarily on the stability of the understanding relationships measured in the past. Of course, the importance of durability determines the allowable cost of the forecast. If we look at the flexibility, it can be viewed as an alternative to generality. A long-lasting function could be set up in terms of basic natural forces and human motives. Even though fundamental, it would nevertheless be hard to measure and thus not very useful. A set of variables whose coefficient could be adjusted from time to time to meet changing conditions in more practical way to maintain intact the routine procedure of forecasting. If we talk of availability, immediate availability of data is a vital requirement and the search for reasonable approximations to relevance in late data is a constant strain on the forecaster's patience. The technique employed should be able to produce meaningful results quickly. Delay in results will adversely affect the managerial decisions. Now, next is economy and economy is a prime consideration. Cost should be weighted against the importance of the forecast to the business operations. A question may arise, how much money and managerial effort should be allocated to obtain a higher level of forecasting accuracy? The criterion here is the economic consideration. We should see the cost in terms of the benefit which would come out of the exercise. That is, we will have to look at the return which the system, which the method would give us. And based on the cost and accuracy, we will have to choose the method. Next is simplicity. Statistical and econometric models are certainly useful but they are intolerably complex. To those executives who have a fear of mathematics, these methods would appear to be Latin or Greek. The procedure should therefore be simple and easy so that the management may appreciate and understand why it has been adopted by the forecaster. And finally coming to consistency. The forecaster has to deal with various components which are independent. If it does not make an adjustment in one component to bring it in line with the forecast of another, he would achieve a whole which would appear consistent. So these are some of the points which we need to take care and which we need to consider while selecting a method of forecasting. And as I said, we will look at the various types and various methods of forecasting gradually one by one in detail from our upcoming sessions. We'll conclude the session finally with the limitations. So let's talk of the limitations. We know that every system has got certain limitations. So let's look at what are the limitations of demand forecasting. First is the change in fashion. Now this is an inevitable consequence of advancement of civilization. The results of demand forecasting have short-lasting impacts, especially in a dynamic business environment. And we know most of the business are dynamic in nature in the modern world. 
The point here to underline is that forecasting can only estimate the future events. It cannot guarantee that these events will take place and even if it takes place, how long will it continue to stay? Therefore, long-term forecast will be less accurate as compared to short-term forecast. The next limitation is the lack of past data. Forecasting is generally based on past events which requires past data, which may or may not be correctly available all the time. This is a typical problem in case of a new products. However, history may not repeat itself at all times. Further, forecasting is based on certain assumptions. Now, if these assumptions are wrong, the forecasting is going to go wrong. The next limitation is that at times it could be uneconomical. The collection of data, analysis of data about the past, present and future and estimation involves a lot of time and money which may not be affordable. Therefore, managers have to balance the cost of forecasting with its benefit. And this is the reason that many small firms do not go for forecasting because the cost is very high for them and the benefits are not equivalent to the cost involved. Next is the lack of experienced experts. Accurate forecasting necessitates experienced experts who may not be easily available. It requires proper judgment and skills on the part of managers. It's not a random process and the person at the helm of affair needs to know the process, the method and all its requirements. Forecasts may go wrong due to bad judgment and skills on the part of some of the managers. Forecasting by less experienced individuals may lead to erroneous estimates. Therefore, forecasts are subject to human error. And finally, we have consumer psychology. Results of forecasting depends largely on consumer psychology. And understanding this itself is very difficult. Knowing what the consumer thinks and what he'll be choosing in future is a very complex process. This requires a very close coordination between the people who are in fields and regular collection of the opinion of the consumers. And then based on these data and the understanding of the psychology and how mood changes, an expert needs to make a judgment. So this itself makes it a very complex process. However, still in spite of these limitations, we use demand forecasting very extensively and it is the need of every business house in the modern world. Well friends, that's all we have in this session. We'll be continuing with the other topics of demand forecasting. Keep watching our videos at www.edupediaworld.com and do subscribe to our channel. Thank you.